Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. My name is Kimir Baker. I am an overcomer. I am very passionate about helping others to achieve an abundant life fueled by spiritual principles and emotional balance. In this podcast series, we delve into spiritual self-care. Yes, we will explore exercising our minds and bodies, but more importantly, we will discuss strengthening our inner being, embracing God's love, and being filled by the fullness of God. As you take this journey with us, we want to inspire possessing your authentic selves and happiness. Welcome back, family. If you were with us last week, we were having a great conversation, Deanna and myself, and we were talking about the goodness of God and and unraveling those layers of how our experiences have shaped our perspective of Him, and one being that He's angry or disappointed at us. And we just really just spent some time talking through that. So if you're just joining us, I do recommend you go back and listen. But another area in our lives where sometimes we have a unique perspective of God is actually dealing with our emotions, dealing with our pain and our obstacles. And we may view him as not being with us or wanting us to be successful. So of course, I asked Deanne to come back so we can talk about this and kind of unravel that layer. Deanne, can you reintroduce yourself to us? I'd be happy to. First, I am honored to be a friend with Kamir Baker. That's my first way I would introduce myself. (laughs) And after that, I'm a wife and a mom and a grandma and a life coach. And one of the things that I get to do as a life coach is see people's lives transformed as they blossom from who or where they are to who they've always wanted to be. And you do such a good job of that, as well as give me compliments. So I may already bless you on your seat because you gave me a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that I, I forget sometimes to do, because I get so excited to talk about God, I don't give the opportunity for people to express a little bit more about the fun things that they are and who, what makes them up and what things they enjoy doing. So can you share one thing that you enjoy doing besides talking about our good old Jesus? Besides talking about Jesus and besides life coaching, because that is so fun. Besides that? Well, okay. Okay. Well, how- <laughs> I, well you know, I really, uh, I'm, I'm, if I'm not learning something, I'm not happy. Mm. So whether that's like YouTube videos or reading books or going to conferences or going to seminars or talking with people who know things that I don't know, I'm passionate about learning, learning new things, not just for my own self and for my own personal growth, but also to equip me to help others as they learn and they're on their own personal development path. So, and of course, you cannot learn more about God than there is to learn. So there's always learning going on. Yeah. And you make it sound so fun. <laughs> and the, the, the word that came to my mouth, or not my mouth, but the word that came in my head and now coming out of my mouth is, wow, what a humble spirit that is. Because I get in trouble with thinking I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I know it all. They're like, girl, no, you don't. I said, I at least know about 98% and then 2%. They're like, girl, <laughs> if you don't stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I appreciate hearing a humility or, or a person who is not afraid to be stretched. And in that stretching, which is actually one of the benefits that you provide us, is that you get to share that understanding, that wealth with us. So, so you guys, there is good to have a humble spirit. Mm-hmm. It does overflow to something good. Are you ready to unlock the extraordinary? Join J Intel in a healing piece for our online workshop. Discover your purpose. We will explore our strengths, desires, and dreams to align with our deepest selves. We will unlock our extraordinary, which will impact those around us. Join us for one incredible evening. 
Tuesday, November 9th at 7 p.m. Central Timing. Go to ahealingpeace.com slash register to learn more and to sign up. So let's go ahead and, and jump back into the conversation because basically we're, we're kind of, again, taking off those layers of how we view God and, and how God interacts with us and getting us back to a place of being centered in his truth. And one of the things that I experienced recently is, I always tell you guys, I end up telling you my business, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I had a moment where I was, oh, and it was so, I tell you, I felt like somebody just chopped my legs off. But I got to a place where I was focused so much on my weaknesses and focused on how others perceive me that I wasn't able to hone in and live in the gifts and talents that God provided for me. And I, and I shared in the previous episode how where I, when I couldn't hear God's voice because all those things were so loud and trying to get back to a place to hear him. And so I kind of want to talk through a little bit more of, you know, how do we get back to a place where we're not necessarily focused on who we are not. Okay. This is so exciting to me because I love doing this kind of stuff. The first thing that I really want to say is there was a man named Don Clifton and he studied human behavior and what, what, how do humans do really well? How do they excel? How do they learn and grow? What's the best environment for them? And what he came to, the conclusion he came to after running experiments and and practicing out hypotheses over thousands of people, like the tens, the twenties, maybe even a hundred thousand people is when someone, when a person is able to express, work within and live within their strengths that are naturally in them, they are prepared like a rocket to blast off. There is no limit to the growth that a person can experience when they are working within their strengths. Hmm. On the flip side, we naturally tend to go towards our weakness We see and feel and experience our weakness and we think, oh my word, I must make this weakness go away. I think part of it is our biology, that our brain, the the part of our brain that's designed for us to survive, wants to protect us from the weakness by bringing it to our attention with a spotlight shining on it. So by goodness, we can cover up that weakness or take care of it and not die. Mm. But What he learned is that you can spend money, time, focus, energy, working on your weakness. So let's just say weakness is I I don't make a good first impression. So you can spend all your time trying to learn how to make a good first impression. That's not in your natural strengths. Mm. You can increase your skill level in making a good first impression in this example by a tiny amount. If you could see my hands, it's just a tiny, an inch. You can increase it by an inch. But the second you take your focus off, the second something happens and you get distracted, the second you move on to the next thing, that inch that you just improved falls back to the status quo. All the energy and focus that you can put on your weakness you can only improve a tiny bit. And that's not even really sustainable. On the flip side, you can put even small amounts of focus and energy into areas that are your strengths, and you will experience exponential and unlimited potential in your growth. This is super exciting to me for two reasons. The first reason is it reflects the heart of God to me. Principle lines up with what I believe and who I believe God is. He doesn't look at us. He doesn't look at you and see your weakness. He looks at you and sees all the beauty and all the wonder and all the majesty and the parts of him that he has crafted into your very being since he formed you in your mother's womb. And he delights in 
all that in you. And he doesn't look at you and, and focus on your weakness. He doesn't even see it. So I, I think this principle of living within your strengths reflects God's character and his nature. And oh, I really like that. But the other reason I really like it is it's so much more fun to work in your strengths. Yeah. It's so yeah. much more fun. Yeah. So some of the strengths might be, I'm trying to get, oh, take a deep breath and calm down. Okay. Some of your strengths might be, someone might be a strategic thinker, or someone might be very responsible, or someone might be a, an excellent listener. Someone might be great with connections. Someone might be full of positivity. That would be five. If, if you had your top three or four or five strengths, and if you, let's see, found a job that allowed you to express positivity and use your strategic thinking, if you are able to function with these strengths, your success is going to be off the charts. It's going to be unlimited. You're going to be able to grow and grow and grow. If you have, let's say, a job that there's no ability to express those strengths, you're going to suffer in that job. It's, it's really literally one reason why people hate their jobs. It's not because the job is bad, because the person next to them can love the same job that they're doing. It's because they aren't made for those skills that that job requires. It's not a fit. They're not able to work within their strengths. And working mm-hmm. within their strengths, it's fun. It's energizing. It's infectious. Other people catch on. It, it becomes like a purpose and your passion. And it's because that's how God made you. That's what he put in you. And for him to see you functioning in those strings is so fun to him. It's like watching little children get to play in the snow for the first time. It just brings joy to his heart because that's how he made you. Okay, I'm going to take a deep breath. And I don't know if that's what you were asking, but. <sighs> no, I, as you were speaking, I was like, oh my gosh, I've been doing it bro. <laughs> that, that was my first thought. Oh, because I'll be focusing on. Well, if I if I improve in this area, I'm the one that's gonna get the books. I'm gonna read about it. And say, okay, but then but it's true though. Like when I do all that effort, I didn't I didn't make any progression, <laughs> and it wasn't fun. No, and I was so mad. And then and then you put the book aside, like you never picked it up. <laughs> yes, you don't want to be reminded that it didn't work out. <laughs> yes. And so, and so hearing you speak, it was like, again, a ton of weight done fell off. <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh, that's right. Because when I am working in my strengths, I do feel better. But that whole weakness thing comes up. And when it comes up, it chokes the life out of me. And so to hear what you shared, I'm like, of course, it's going to be a replay a couple of times. Because you really are shifting the way that we think. Oh, well, that's sweet. That, see, that's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, yeah. And you're, you're opening us up to all the potential and all the greatness that's in us. And not only are you opening us up to it, but you're helping us to connect. That's God's fanfare. Like, that. that's him already cheering. Mm. Like, oh, yes. Mm-hmm. She. And she and she did this and that grew and that grew and da 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 and and you hear this level of excitement and it makes at least for me it allows me to know a and it's weird how this is happening but I'm just gonna be honest to what's happening to me but you're opening up for me that God is my biggest fan mm. right and and then not only is he my biggest fan but There's so much that I can accomplish. Our 501c3 nonprofit organization, J Intel, and A Healing Peace are looking for community partners to support our mission. We are bridging the gap between faith based and therapeutic resources. Consider partnering with us. Go to jintel.org/slash donate and contribute. By contributing in this manner, you ensure that we continue to spread this inspiring and encouraging message. When I'm looking at my weaknesses, I can't accomplish anything and I'm depressed 
and I'm, I'm hiding out. I don't want people to see me because I, I feel like I'm so flawed. Yes. Yeah, right. And and now it's like, oh no, you're not flawed. Like there, there's things in you that you're not attuned to that is great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I don't want to imply that there's not things we have to deal with or work through. I mean, we that's that's not that's not what I'm talking about. But it's like what you just said. God is your biggest fan. Yeah. He is so for you. And when you are doing exploits, it thrills him. It, it's okay. So let me let me paint this picture. Yeah. God made you, right? Mm-hmm. He made and each person listening. He made each person listening. And for each one, he put a special mix, a special recipe of things inside of you that he wanted inside of you. And when you express those things within you, you actually glorify him. I think that the common way of thinking is, okay, let's just say music is a special thing that he put inside of me, which he didn't, but let's just say that's what it was. Mm -hmm. If I was to release that music and practice and grow my ability and Mm -hmm. play beautiful music, then God's like, my child is enjoying everything that I put in her. Like that playground, she's getting to play in that playground. And it it brings glory to God because I'm made this way. And Mm -hmm. it's not, it feels like it would be arrogant for me to say, oh, I'm so gifted in music. And it could be very arrogant to say, but on the flip side, there's, there's a place to say that, that acknowledges who God is. Yeah. It's him that put this in me. And if I deny that this is in me, Mm. I'm, I'm denying who he is. I'm, I'm like robbing a part of his character that he wanted to show the world through me. And I would like to add, because as you were sharing that example of the musician, what came to my mind is recently I went to an art exhibit and the lady, what she created or creates is a lot of celestial beings. And she does it in such a large scale that it engulfs you. And so afterwards, I asked, I said, so like when you're doing this, are are you thinking in terms of like God? Because I mean, there's celestial beings. I mean, that's, you know, the religious context, right? And she said, not completely. She said, but it is part of my upbringing, but I'm just in a place of just expression. And because she's in that place of expression, other people see it and they're like, they're like, whoa, this is incredible. And because of that, they're like, oh, this is incredible. She's been able to have her art in galleries and places that you wouldn't imagine it would be in. And so when I was speaking with her, it was really clear that God was the one who opened up that door to let it be shown everywhere. Because even though in her moment, she wasn't necessarily thinking about him in that context, the outcome, the overflow of what she creates does exemplify him. <laughs> and so he opens up the door so people can see and be in awe of who he is, not realizing that that's what's happening. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. And I was, and it, and it blew me away. And I was like, come here, you're working too hard. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, oh, you know, just, just let him do him. Right. And so, so hearing you say that about the musician and glorifying God with his talent and living through that expression of what was created in him, that is so encouraging, uplifting, because it gives us this freedom to be in our purpose. It gives us this freedom to not be ashamed of it, embarrassed by it, but to say, this is part of me. And in the process, I have this wonderful place to be able to exemplify who put it in me. Yes. So that's actually more humble than trying to pretend like it's not in you or that you don't have it. Mm. That's actually more humble than 
just trying to improve your weakness. Trying to improve your weakness, honestly, is about the most arrogant thing you can do. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to call you arrogant. Come here. But, <laughs> but it says that I can do this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's, that's a very good perspective. And because you think you can do it, you're not allowing room for God because you're so focused on you trying to do it. And then you're back into the perfection cycle and the performance cycle and the not measuring up cycle. And you're back into the either the victimhood or the mm-hmm. focused on yourself or criticizing yourself. And mm-hmm. actually, none of that brings glory to God. It's like a, it's like a football coach, right? So there's a, there's I'm not a big football person, but, you know, let's say that there's a coach that everyone knows that their team wins the Super Bowl every year. It's this coach. This coach wins the Super Bowl every year. Got a great quarterback, a great receiver, great running back, great all the things. But all of that reflects the skill of the coach. Because you can put all those great players on a different team without a coach that knows how to best maximize everything that's in those people, and that team won't win, right? Mm-hmm. It reflects mm-hmm. the coach. It kind of in the same way. I'm like, oh, clearly God is much bigger than a coach. But in the same way, when we are throwing those touchdown passes or catching those uncatchable passes, mm-hmm. All together, it shows the greatness of our God. Things that couldn't be achieved are achievable through him. All things are possible to him that believes. And if you're believing that you're just incapable and you have nothing to offer and you're just full of failures and weaknesses, Mm -hmm. there is nothing you can attain. And if you're believing that the creator God of the whole universe has equipped you so much so to perform all the good works and purposes that he's put before you, that the fullness of him is living within you and all of him is available and accessible to you for each step that you take, all things are possible. Mm. I'm sorry. I don't know what we're supposed to be talking about. No, I mean, no, that, that that's incredible. And it's so insane inspiring and empowering and exciting. There's a lot of aims in that and those the things that you shared because again it brings us back to being in him and being in the purpose that he designed for us and not being timid of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but being excited and being free in it. Yes, being free in it. Isn't that fun? Isn't that good? Yeah, yeah cuz cuz as you share that like Today, when I was reading in my um, Bible time with God, I was reading about John becoming John and how he was in the desert and stuff like that. And what really stood out for me this time when I was reading that was that God knew all along who John was going to be <laughs> before John knew it, right? Yeah. And And when I was reading that, I was blown away because how many times do I try to interject what God has designed because I don't see it in that moment and, you know, try to put my two cents in or, or try to rearrange, you know, his, his plan because I'm, I'm having this moment. And so when I was reading that, it brought me to a place of, first of all, he is the creator of the world. I'm pretty sure he sees things, no things more than I do. But it also, for me, emphasized the importance and the magnitude of what he's designed for us, that he thought about it that intently and that it doesn't shift for him. And I was just like, okay, this is the place that I need to get back to. So I'm not minimizing my gifts so that I'm not minimizing my talents. I'm not minimizing my purpose. Because he's already have this really lavish, grandiose plan. And it's exciting, but I need to quit trying to figure it out. (laughs) Just be, just be. (laughs) Yeah. And while I'm being, enjoying what he is doing. 
because he's enjoying it. And so I appreciate our conversation because you really brought that home for me because it's like, oh, what can I do differently this week, next week, because I'm living in my strengths? <laughs> First of all, y'all be like, girl, if you don't stop talking, because <laughs> we already know I love talking about God. Could you imagine? Be like, girl, <laughs> you need another conversation piece. <laughs> but anyways... <laughs> But but outside of the God perspective, but just even again, getting back to that place of freedom. And so I, I think, again, what you've shared has been very enlightening. And for you guys who are listening, you're probably just getting started seeing us in our little social media that we are having our workshop November 9th. And it's called Discover Your Purpose. And we're going to get back to these areas where there's things in you that is from God. And and we're going to encourage and and help bring that more into the forefront. And so that you're able to enjoy the life that God has provided. So I definitely want you guys to come out that Tuesday, November 9th. I know I'm a little ahead of myself, but it just made so much sense for, for us to talk about it. Well, it is. It dovetails perfectly because if you're living in your strengths, you will find yourself feeling fulfilled and living in your purpose. So discover your purpose. Yes. Yes. And just so you know that Deanne, she's always with me in our workshop. So if you like what she didn't share these past two interviews, oh, come on out. Be like, I need to hear some more. And again, for us, when we do our our workshops, they're always interactive. They're always fun. And and (laughs) I do like making the ladies laugh a little bit. So I I want you guys to come out and enjoy that time. And as we wrap up today, I don't know, Deanne, if you have any closing thoughts. I mean, you said it so powerfully. I don't know if there's anything to add to all that goodness. Hey, I want to add something for you. Oh, okay. You, one of the things that's so beautiful and fantastic about you is that you, you hear really well and you receive really well. And that in the moment you are always, I don't know how you do it, but you listen and you hear for yourself. You're being present and you're able to verbalize it and express it. But I also know you'll continue to meditate on and think on the things. I I really admire how right in the moment you're able to take something in, hear it, and and let it impact you. I think Mm -hmm. that's a... um, you model that really well. And I, I like that about you very much. Well, I appreciate the compliment. And initially I was going to like try to say, oh no, but I'm learning. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Let yes. me just go. <laughs> exactly. And you do a great job of complimenting me. That's why I always enjoy having you on the show. <laughs> and, and that's why I always tell people, find another Deanne in your life that can just bring out that goodness in you I think she epitomizes what a safe, supportive friend looks like and and to be able to have relationships that build you up, inspire you, encourages you, and help shift your thinking. Because the way that we think is not necessarily something that's going to keep us in our excitement journey. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can say that many times. But you guys, I'm going to close this out for today because me and Deanna, as you can tell, we would just keep on talking. And you'd be like, oh, girl, you done wore me out. I got to go pick some food for my kids and pick them up. I'm going to stop. But come out to our workshop. It's going to be incredible. Discover your purpose. We're just going to highlight the things that were shared tonight and and just put it in a, a practical, fun sense so that you can walk away and have things in your pocket And of course, next week is our infamous tools and tips show. I said every time, which is, man, it's going to be hard to get this in 10, but we're going to get this in 10 and you're going to walk away with a little extra. But all right now, and come back next week 